And the White House already threatening to veto a bill that would repeal the estate tax. Both Democrats and Republicans are now all fired up over the bill. Republicans calling the tax morally wrong, and Democrats saying a repeal would only benefit the rich. Joining us, Representative Christy Noem, Representative, uh, why do you feel so strongly about the estate tax, and is it only to benefit the rich that you would get rid of it? Well, for me in particular, um, I think it's an extremely unfair tax. This will be the first time in 10 years that we voted on a full repeal bill in the House. Uh, and I have a very personal story about the death tax. My dad was killed in an accident on our family farm when I was 21 years old and still taking college classes. So we had land, we had machinery, we had cattle, but we didn't have any money in the bank. And so the fact that just a short period of time after my dad was killed, at 49 years old, uh, we got a bill in the mail from the IRS, and it devastated us because we had to figure out how to pay it. And uh, how did you pay it? I mean, if you've got this huge bill, I mean, what, what do you do? Well, because you know, it, it was, you hear the story with a lot of ranchers and farmers. Yeah, when families have tragedies, too, um, you know, for me in particular, I kept hearing my dad's words go through my head. My dad had always said to us, don't sell land, Christy, because God isn't making any more land. But really, our only option was to either sell a piece of ground that had been in our family for generations or to take out a loan to pay off that bill. So we took out a loan. It took us 10 years to pay off that loan and made it difficult to cash flow during those period of time. And, and that's really what got me interested in government and politics because I was so frustrated that we had bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. making policies that were hurting people that were just trying to run businesses and keep their family business going. Um, and so that's really what got me interested in even serving and making a difference for normal everyday people. But that's, this is an extremely unfair tax that's been in place for years and it's time that it goes. The, uh, d the defendants, or defendants, the Democrats rather, um, say that this bill, if passed, would mean there'd be something like a $270 billion greater debt um, that the nation would have over a period of 10 years. So how do you respond to that? Well, I just think it's about fairness. And our tax code should be fair. We shouldn't pick winners and losers. We shouldn't decide that somebody is worse than other people uh, because of what they do for a living or because they own a family-owned business. Uh, we should make it as simple as possible, yet make it work. And we shouldn't cause policy or put it into place that would take away family businesses. It doesn't matter if they have a hardware store, a family restaurant, or a family farm. Uh, when they have a tragedy happen to their family and then the federal government suddenly decides they should have part of that business, uh, it's wrong. What do, so the House, do you think it'll pass the House? You expect it will? I do expect it'll pass the House. Um, the Senate, uh, what do you expect was going to happen in the U.S. Senate? Well, the Senate had a vote on the death uh, tax repeal when they did their budget debate. A non-binding one? Non-binding one. It was part of a, a resolution that went through the Senate. They had 54 votes, I believe, on that. They need 60 to get through the Senate this time around. So I'm not certain if they've got the votes to get that done or not. But the fact that we are seeing more and more support for a full repeal is good news. And it means a lot for those small families that are currently wondering how they're going to keep it in the next generation. Right now, the threshold for estate taxes is a little bit, uh, and people who, who have a, an estate of a, under about $5, five million mm -hmm. don't pay, don't, don't, they're exempt from a tax. There's an exemption in place to a certain level. And then the tax we lowered a few years ago is part of a bargain as well. You know, and we can make that debate that it doesn't apply to very many people, but when it's unfair and it's double taxation, should it still stay in place? I don't believe Th so. That's, that's one issue, but I'm also, I mean, the one issue is the double taxation fairness mm -hmm. issue, but the other is a, if, you, if you own a, a hardware store, mm -hmm. um, you, know, it, you, know, it, you know, does it kick in for the middle class? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Well, when you look particularly at tax reform, any time that you can keep more money in the, ha in the pockets of people that are out there turning it over in the economy, we're going to see more growth than what we've seen under and, this administration. And what people may not realize is that the wealthy actually do, a, there, there are ways to get around the death tax. You buy life insurance policies, for instance, that then will pay off uh, to the beneficiaries to pay the tax. I mean, the problem is the, the wealthy really can navigate. There's, there's a group of people mm -hmm. under the real wealthy and a little bit above the middle class. That, they're the ones that are getting hit. You'll, you'll hear that most of the debate from the Democrats tomorrow on the House floor will be in, well, there's these super rich individuals out there that we've got to get part of their estates to get that You're never going to get theirs. Their we won't. They just have the money and the resources to be able to avoid the taxes, and therefore it's a big falsehood of the, of the whole program. Representative, nice to see yeah, you. Good to see you too, Greta.